Hi, I'm Sagar. Hi, I'm Sagar too. Let's move on. Today, I'm going to talk about machine learning and how easy it is to create a ML model using Snowpark. Aren't you forgetting about Streamlit? Talk about it. How cool is it to create a web application using Streamlit? Stop interrupting me. Yes, Snowpark and Streamlit in Snowflake Data Cloud is a killer combination. It is very easy and secured. Let's just skip this talk. Why don't we get an expert to show us a demonstration? Let's hear it from Priti Karanam, a senior BI consultant at Altis New Zealand. Hey, are you saying I'm not an expert? And why do you have those shades on? Hello, I'm Kriti Karanam. I work as a senior BI consultant at Altis in New Zealand. I have worked on an end-to-end -end machine learning project for the use case of predicting customer churn using Snowflake's Snowpark for Python and Streamlit features. Now, why is customer churn so important to us? As per the latest research done by Harvard and the article that's published in Forbes, it's about five times more expensive to acquire a new customer than to retain one. So if we are able to predict the customer churn beforehand, we can take measures and actions to prevent them from churning. Hence, for the demonstration purpose, I have considered this use case and the data that I have obtained is from a Kaggle website. It's a bank customer churn prediction data set. The data was in CSV format. It was loaded onto Snowflake table initially the machine learning model was then applied on it. So before applying the machine learning model, as a part of data pre-processing step, I've used label encoder as a data conversion, which converts the categorical data into numerical format. This is important step because machine learning model works best on numerical data. The data set was split into 80-20 ratio with the 80% being training data and 20% being test data. The random forest classifier algorithm was then applied on this data set. What is random forest classifier algorithm? It creates a set of decision trees from randomly selected subset of training set and then it collects the votes from different decision trees to make the final prediction. So there are different measures, uh, metrics to measure this uh, model like accuracy which is nothing but a fraction of prediction that the model got right we have precision which says what portion of positive identifications were actually correct and we we have recall which says what portion of positive values actual positive values were correctly identified and then f1 is nothing but a measure of preciseness and robustness of model confusion matrix represents the summary of the predictions in the matrix form so top left we have true negative which says it, these records these number of records have been correctly predicted as negative class and bottom right we have true positive which says these number of records were correctly predicted as a positive class then we have bottom left which is false negative which says about incorrectly predicted negative class then we have top right which is false positive which says about incorrectly predicts the positive class when the feature uh, importance was carried out the age number of products and is active member were identified as key columns so once the machine learning model was built uh, on this data set it was then registered on Snowflake using Snowflake's UDF, which is user-defined function. So after the registration, we can call the UDF and save the result of UDF into a Snowflake table for future reference. Alternatively, we can directly call the UDF in a SQL select statement, which runs the query and then returns the results as the result of UDF as SQL query result. Thus, Snowpark for Python provides the flexibility on the usage of UDF. Snowflake's Streamlit feature is like an icing on the cake, which provides the wonderful UI 
for visualization purpose.